Hi everyone, and thanks for returning to our video. We're going to discuss a variety of things today, including how short we are on liquidity to produce synthetics, how they are already defaulting, the AMC boom phases, and much more. Let's take a closer look at what transpired first. When we examine the shares that AMC can borrow, we can see that there are currently 100 shares available. This began at 350,000 and decreased to 100 shares per AMC, which at one point obviously peaked at 900,000. There are clearly many different opinions on this, and one of them is that there aren't enough synthetics to make 4 AMC. We know that there aren't really that many shares available to be borrowed for these shorts, since most retail investors who own the majority of the float aren't lending out their shares. We've known for a very long time, though, that they are undoubtedly producing synthetics for shorts to borrow, as seen by the large number of shares that are made accessible each day. It's also critical to realize that the decline from 900,000 to 100 shows that, despite producing synthetic shares for AMC, they are still in desperate need of AMC shares. This is especially true in light of the impending events we'll be talking about, which include liquidity issues, the fact that they are defaulting on the boom phase for AMC, and a host of other issues. First, this G provides two indications that they are still in need of substantial amounts of AMC shares, and that, despite producing synthetics, it seems that they are running out of liquidity to do so. As seen by the fact that AMC is presently up 10.12%, they don't seem to have the ability to suppress AMC as much as they usually would, even in this scenario when they don't have the money to produce the synthetics for AMC. Additionally, is to talk about this now earlier we genuinely talk about this, just as we did when we talked about how the DTC's FIC informed participants last Friday about an important service update that charged extra for erratic market events. We also talked about how their goods prices are going up. Now that you know this, some of the things we talked about in terms of the value at risk and the need for these modifications suggest that they are running out of money themselves, which is why they wish to reduce the possibility of companies defaulting by putting in place measures like these. Nevertheless, I would also like to add this viewpoint if the FCC is deliberately responding to the release of economic indicator data with these modifications, then I think they have already been helping participating netting members more than they would have liked to with their margin accounts. Thus, the awareness that certain companies are on the verge of defaulting or even facing a margin call is what we are discussing at this moment. We're seeing the FIC do this right now because they've been stepping in and providing them with the liquidity they require to prevent defaulting or selling off their entire portfolio. Furthermore, the FIC is making sure that they won't be made to pay for a participation member's default or default, which would eventually seriously harm the FIC's default fund and maybe put the business's ability to carry out its market activities in jeopardy. A portion of the DTC or FIDD FIC as we have already mentioned, they don't currently have enough funds to cover every single participant they might only have enough for one or two so they don't want to be stuck paying for the liquidation or default of some of the participating members. They are aware that they currently lack the liquidity to cover every exposure that they have listed. This implies that all proceeds will be used for that course in the event that some participants default or liquidate, leaving them with no money left over to support other participants and they are charging these costs as a result. For this reason, they are implementing these new rules, which help us understand that, once again, companies are in a situation where they are running out of liquidity, they are in danger of failing, going through a liquidation, or having to pay margin costs and the clearing houses. The um backing members that are providing this liquidity are also having problems right now. This is what we have been looking at. And when we go back to our original conversation about how their liquidity is running low, it starts to make sense why they can't keep making synthetics. The fact that clearing houses which support members like the FIC are clearly running out of liquidity themselves and are afraid to be giving their liquidity to other members because they are trying to prepare for what is about to happen are some of the other reasons we can see why short sellers are unable to close their positions. If the stock is actively traded, they may not be able to buy back enough shares to cover their short position. Furthermore, it is important to realize that the accumulation zone, which is a technical analysis term for a time frame during which investors are primarily purchasing or building up a stock, despite a decline in price, indicates that investors think the stock is cheap and will likely see a price increase in the near future. It would appear that these elements alone are the primary reasons why shorts are reluctant to cover AMC and why they are unable to seal the deal. A similar situation occurred with Aki Entertainment in December 2020, when the stock price of the firm experienced severe volatility due to a shelf offering to sell 50 million shares. This is a strategy to raise capital as the industry approaches a potential boom phase when fear, uncertainty, and doubt will likely cause the stock price to climb sharply. 
the way the food has been rising, which we'll discuss later, and the way they're discussing AMC getting deed listed, which we'll also discuss show that we've already witnessed this in action. It is also crucial to realize that at this point in time, this is the accumulation zone since a random fund has bought 14,500 shares of AMC, perhaps not enough to lend, but enough to profit from a squeeze event. As a result, we're seeing the exact same thing happen now that companies are piling into AMC, exactly as we have in the past. Once more, this impacts the vast majority of companies that now own AMC shares. It is not confined to just one or two companies. As you can see, these companies continue to invest in AMC even though its price is declining. In reality, you can see how many companies, which are currently averaging about $70 or $80 per share of AMC, are still doing this because they are prepared for the boom phase 4 AMC and know what's going to happen. Take shorting a firm at $72, for instance, and continuing to short it down to $24 without closing your position. Since most shorts are unable to close their position, they typically cover after a 10-20% to return. First of all, it's critical to comprehend the prior argument we made regarding the reason they can't close the position. Second, it's critical to realize that food is being produced since AMC is E is being suppressed due to their inability to close the position and ongoing liquidity problems. Lastly, as we previously indicated, you can see yet another indication of their desperation when they realize they don't have the liquidity to produce synthetics. We can thus see that this brief thesis is coming to an end and that the story will now revolve around their being delisted and going bankrupt. Now that AMC isn't going bankrupt, this is obviously the new narrative around the company. As you can see, Huge really states this. As we discussed, they claim that AMC will be listed once more, which is essentially the same as declaring bankruptcy. We talked about the fact that shorts would only be able to get out of this scenario if AMC filed for bankruptcy and ceased to be tradable, in which case they wouldn't have to pay back the shares they borrowed. The same would hold true if AMC were delisted, but that would require AMC to be listed. There is not even the slightest hint or indicator that AMC will be listed again if we take a close look at everything that is going on for the company right now. It is evident to us that funds are being raised, we have a sizable cash reserve, the fundamentals are strengthening, and we will turn a profit shortly. Therefore, AMC wants you to sell your share so that they can truly cover their shares, which is why they are currently having financial issues. All of this is being done because they are unable to resign from their positions if they could, they would not be manufacturing so many synthetics every day to the point where their supply of monies is running low. And if they were wealthy, it's only because they're wearing a lot of shorts at the moment. We're seeing Ficky actually taking up charges and charging people because they understand what will happen if AMC shorts when they have to cover the billions of synthetics. This avoids them having to face a scenario where a firm gets exposed to over leveraged short positions to billions of synthetics and that they have to spend all of their money to help this one member to cover the dent. I want to thank everyone for watching. I'll see you all again later.